Getting started with Photo Mirage is incredibly easy and addictively fun. In this video, you'll learn how to transform an image into a captivating animation in just a few quick steps with Photo Mirage's intuitive tools. When you first open up Photo Mirage, you'll be greeted by a handy welcome guide, which is packed with helpful video tutorials and other learning content, as well as a gallery of user photo animations to help inspire you. To get started on your own animation, the first thing you'll have to do once you open Photo Mirage is to bring an image in. There are a few ways to do this. The first is by clicking the open button in the middle of your workspace to browse for an image on your system. So I'll find my image, click on it, and then I would just click open to bring it in. Or you can go up to the file menu, choose new or open and do the same thing. Or you can simply drag and drop your photo right into your workspace, which will import it into Photo Mirage automatically. And Photo Mirage works with several popular image formats, so you can work with JPEGs, GIFs, PNG, BMP, TIFF, or RAW images. So now that we've imported our image, it's time to get working on our animation. The first set of tools you'll use, and probably the most important, are the animation tools. You can find them under the animation icon, which is selected by default when you open the program. We're already selected on motion arrows on the left, so all you have to do is click and drag to drop arrows on all the parts of the image that you want to animate. And the trick to this is to make sure that you draw the arrows in the direction that you want to see the movement happen. So I want the lion's mane to move in our animation, so I'm gonna draw arrows facing outwards all around the mane. Next, I'm going to limit the parts of the image that will be animated. So I'll switch over to my anchor points tool, and then I'll just plop these anchor points all around the inside of the lion's face and over here on his ear, which tells Photo Mirage that everything inside those areas should remain still. Then to see what my animation looks like, I'll come down to the bottom left of my screen and click play. And there you go, it's that easy. Of course, you may want to refine your animation a little bit if your first attempt isn't perfect. And so there are a number of other handy tools that will come into play. For more detailed tutorials on specific tools, you can bring back up the welcome guide and browse through the tutorials section. Now we've already touched on how to use motion arrows and anchor points, but we didn't discuss the ability to fine tune them. So under the animation icon, you can also edit motion arrows or anchor points, use the delete icon to remove them, and you can also adjust the speed of your animation. Next, we'll talk about the mask tool. The mask tool is another way to isolate regions of your photo that you wanna keep still. So I'm just gonna use this brush to mask out the whole inside of the lion's face. Next, we have our two selection tools, which enable you to move or manipulate multiple motion arrows or anchor points at the same time. So the select tool will allow you to draw a rectangular box around a bunch of motion arrows or anchor points, but you can also use the freehand select tool if you need to grab multiple motion arrows or anchor points in a more detailed area that a rectangle is not gonna be able to capture. Next, we'll take a look at the Smart Photo Fix tool. Smart Photo Fix applies a set of color balancing and sharpening corrections to your photo automatically to make it look as good as it can. All you have to do is click on the Smart Photo icon and then click Apply. Then finally, we have the Crop tool, which allows you to trim the edges of your image in case you want to frame it a bit differently. The Crop tool also comes with multiple presets for different aspect ratios. For example, if I want my image to be a little tighter on the lion's face, like so. Now down below your main tools, you'll see visibility layers. Visibility layers show and hide different elements of your photo animation project, allowing you to see what you're working on more clearly. So you could choose to hide your motion arrows and anchor points, your crop box, your mask, and your image file itself. And then just click on them again to bring them all back. You've already seen how to play or stop your animation with a button down on the bottom left. And just to the right of the play button, you have options to email or export your photo animation, as well as undo and redo buttons. Then coming over to the bottom right, you have your zoom options. So you can click zoom to 100% to see your image at its full size or you can use the slider to zoom in a little bit closer for more detail, in which case you can click and hold the pan button to move around to different parts of your image, and then click the zoom to fit button to zoom back out and fill the full screen. So that pretty much covers all of your tools for creating and editing your animations, but we'll just go over a couple more housekeeping items. In the file menu at the top left, you'll see a number of commands, most of which are self-explanatory. We're gonna click on save as, and then we'll save our animation in Photo Mirage's native CPM file format, which means that I can always come back and edit the project at a later time. Next to file under the user interface menu, you can change your preferred color theme. So I'll just change mine here. And then under the help menu, you have access to all kinds of helpful resources to ensure that you are making the most out of your animations with Photo Mirage. And that pretty much covers everything you need to know to get started. Remember to check out our other tutorials under the welcome menu for more detailed instructions on other Photo Mirage tools. 
Now go have fun experimenting and you'll be a pro in no time.